Hello folks, Danny Panzella here from the Peaceful Streets Project, New York City. Uh, and I just wanted to tell you about something that was really disturbing to me this week. The other day I was driving along and I saw a man in a wheelchair. Yeah, he had no legs, his legs were cut off at the knees. And he was asking for charity on the side of the road. The man is in need, and he's so much in need that he's willing to sit outside in the cold, in the rain, in the elements, to ask for people's spare change. Now, people, I, I, I'm sickened sometimes by the callous attitude that people have. Uh, they call people asking for money scam artists. My question is, what kind of scam is that? What kind of scam are they running exactly? I just, I'm really confused by that. I don't know what that scam could be. Why would somebody who's able to drive a decent car and live a decent lifestyle, why would they sit outside all day in the cold during the winter to beg for people's money? It doesn't make sense. For spare change. How much could he make? I see this man often enough at this particular intersection. Well, this time it was different because he was surrounded by six cops. So I stopped and I started videotaping. Because whenever there's a, I see a police interaction, I videotape it. Because that's the only way that we're gonna get police accountability. No inspector general appointed by the mayor is going to bring accountability to the NYPD. No political process. The, the police are there, it's been proven, the New York City has argued it in court, the police are there not to protect citizens or the people, the police are there to protect the government. They're there to uphold the law, which is the opinion of the ruling class. Um, the law makes up the government, right? So the police are there to protect the government. After about 20 minutes or so, finally, they put the man in the back of the squad car. They struggle with getting his wheelchair into the trunk and then they drive away. So today I happened to see him again. So I stopped to talk to him. Just tell me what happened. How you doing guys? They call me the highway hustler, right? Well, recently, like maybe two, three days ago, I was doing my thing on the highway on the shoulder road, and um, I got pulled over by the police. They said they didn't want to take me, but the, the um, order came from City Hall Commissioner's office. I mean, what I'm doing is just trying to survive, take care of me and my children. I have a place to stay, but I still need extra money, you know? The government gives me money, but it's really not enough. But I have to do what I have to do to make ends meet. And I'm not hurting nobody, I'm not selling drugs, I'm not doing drugs, I'm in recovery, matter of fact. So, what I'm doing is just trying to survive, man. And, they arrested me, they took me to jail. I spent the night in jail. The, um, the judge vacated the, the warrants, I mean, the um, summonses. So here I am back on a different block. So hopefully that won't happen again or no time soon. Thank you. So they arrested you, they kept you overnight. Yeah. Just for no other reason, you didn't arrest, resist arrest. Yes, that's enough. It was just about the fact that you were asking for charity yes, on the sir. street. Yes, sir. And that's, that's against the law? Well, they say it's against the law. Some say it's against the law. Some say it's not against the law. But I mean, I'm not hurting nobody. You know, yeah. so I'm just doing what I gotta do. And how did the police treat you? Oh, they treated me pretty, very well, very well. They was good to me, you know, because they didn't really want to do it, you know. They was real good to me, you know. They were gentlemen, you know, and I, I no disrespect nowhere, you know. One, two, one precinct is a nice precinct. Yeah. You know? Unfortunately, it's a precinct, but still, you know, they are have you respect. A, are you a veteran? No, I got hit by a car. Oh, okay. Helping somebody. All right. But um, other than that, I'm okay. All right. Have you ever been arrested before for this? One time before, yeah. 
long time ago. And so they, the cops actually told you that the the order has came from commissioner's office in City Hall. So this new mayor, De Blasio, is no better than Bloomberg, huh? Well, they all got to do their job. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And their job is to put peaceful people in jail for <laughs> I guess just for so. asking people for help. <laughs> I guess so. You know, but it, you know, it is what it is. That's you know crazy. Saying? So there you have it, folks. Right out of the mouths of the cops, according to his testimony. This is coming from the higher ups, the brass, city hall and the commissioner's office wants to take poor people asking for charity off the streets. Now we know we've seen it in the news recently that they're cracking down on people asking for charity in the subways. Well, now they're taking it to the streets as well. And this is all part of this ridiculous, superficial, um, what is it? How do they refer to it? Broken windows policing policy. That there, if there are broken windows, if there's graffiti, if there are beggars on the street, that somehow they think that that is, uh, causes an atmosphere where that breeds crime. It's not Wall Street robbing the economy. It's not. It's not Wall Street and the government centrally planning our economy to rob the poor, rob the middle class, rob everyone except that tiny little politically politically connected investment class. It's not their fault. It's because there's graffiti, broken windows, and people asking for charity. That breeds crime. Even if the cops were nice to the man because they felt so disgusting about themselves for having to arrest a man and put him in a cage overnight because he was asking people to help him, asking for people's spare change. They still followed that order that they knew was not only immoral, but it's probably illegal. It's absolutely illegal according to the Constitution. The man has the absolute right to stand in public and ask, or sit in public and ask for people's charity. That is a constitutional right. Even if the police that arrested this man were, were nice as pie, they still followed an order that they know is immoral. Police, you know it's immoral to arrest people, detain people, force people into shelters. You know that that's immoral. Why? For asking for charity? For asking for people's spare change? These people deserve to sit in a cell overnight? No, you know it's that's not true. You know that that's immoral, putting people in a cage. And yet you still do it for your paycheck. That is why there's no such thing as a good cop. Because every single one of you, I'm ranting. I'm ranting because I am completely livid that this man, with all the hardships that he has to endure in his life, that he had to sit in a jail cell for a night because de Blasio, this progressive mayor, the Tea Party wants to call him a communist, really, would a communist do this? A communist is going to put people in jail for asking for charity? Wake up. Wake up. There's no such thing as communists and capitalists in government. They all work for the same cause, control. It's all about police state control. Controlling the population, that's what government is about. Communist. I laugh when I hear people say, oh, de Blasio, he's a communist. He's gonna turn us into, or Obama, he's gonna turn us into a communist dictatorship. We are a dictatorship. We're already a dictatorship. And the police are the front lines of that fascist dictatorship. Because the police are the ones that arrest you for being poor. The police are the ones that are going to come and take your guns when they finally are completely banned. It's going to be the, oh yeah, it's going to be the NYPD that you Tea Partiers love and respect. And oh, they're keeping us safe and they're heroes. Oh, they're, he they're not going to be heroes when they come to take your guns because, oh, well, we don't like this law, but it's the law. We have to do it. I have to obey the law and uphold the law for my paycheck so I can feed my kids. I have to destroy the Second Amendment so I can feed my kids. Right? Right, officers of the law? That's what you're doing. I'm furious. And you know what? This video may be a little disjointed and I'm just kind of ranting off the top of my head. I don't care. It may seem unprofessional. I don't care. A poor man who had done nothing wrong 
spent the night in jail because cops were too cowardly to stand up to the upper ranks who are telling them to do things that they know are immoral. And that is why they are not good cops. There is no such thing as a good cop. You know who's a good cop? Adil Polanco, who quit because they were forcing him to meet quotas and he was forced to write tickets to people he knew didn't deserve it. That's a good cop. Someone who stops participating in the immoral system is a good cop. Adrian Schoolcraft, who blew the whistle and recorded his superiors telling them to do immoral and illegal things. And then he was put in a psychiatric hold when he released the tapes. That's how good cops deal with people that cross the blue wall of silence. Good, if there were good cops, there wouldn't be a blue wall of silence. If most cops were good, there wouldn't be a blue wall of silence. Because the few bad apples, the few corrupt cops would be arrested and put in jail for their corruption and that'd be the end of it. But that's not the case. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you badge-worshipping sympathizers who make excuses for this disgusting, violent, despicable hate behavior. If a cop can't be trusted to do the right thing when it comes to a, a poor man begging on the street, how can he be trusted with any other authority? If he is going to abuse his authority, knowing full well it's an abuse of his authority, because they were apologetic to the man about the fact that they had to arrest him, but they still did it anyway. Start standing up, people. You better start standing up and start videotaping and confronting police when they're doing these types of things. I'm telling you, it's, it, it's not enough to just videotape from a distance and put it on YouTube. It's not enough. We have to start confronting these police and telling them. I'm not saying be aggressive. Peacefully. Read the Peaceful Streets manual. PeacefulStreetsNYC.com It's about peacefully but assertively letting cops know what they're doing is wrong. And I'm ashamed that I didn't intervene when that man was being arrested. I'm ashamed. Because there were eight cops there. I didn't get out of the car. And I'm ashamed of that. I should have. I should have gone up to those cops and told them how, how despicable and disgusting they are in a nice way. <laughs> For putting a man in a cage. And then to add insult to injury, they let him spend the night in jail, and then the judge throws out the charges the next morning. After they let him sit a night in jail. Start standing up, people. Start peacefully confronting cops and letting them know their behavior is not okay, serving the system is not okay, doing their jobs for a paycheck to feed their kids is not okay because it's the equivalent of selling drugs to school kids to feed your kids. Putting peaceful people, innocent people in a cage or hurting innocent people, shooting innocent people like Ramarley Graham just so you can feed your kids, you're no different than someone who sells heroin or crack. All right, folks, I'm gonna sign off before I get too crazy. Thank you for your support of the Peaceful Streets Project. Uh, visit PeacefulStreetsNYC.com uh, for more information and our cop watching manual. Please, please videotape the police. No matter what. We need to help our fellow brothers and sisters, you know, our, our, the people in our community and, and really protect them with our cameras and just pull out your phone whenever you see an interaction pull out your phone and videotape them and if you're questioned why you're videotaping officer I just want to make sure that you're not going to violate anybody's rights that you're going to act within the law that you're supposedly upholding and then take it a, take it a step further and, and challenge their ideas about what law enforcement is and should be so I'm Danny Panzello for the Peaceful Streets New York City peace